A horrific traffic accident left Keith Yanks paralyzed and fearful that he wouldn't be able to continue his passion of painting. Without the use of his hands, he thought he would never paint again. Back in 1995, I had a car accident and um, I broke my neck at C5-6, meaning that I'm paralyzed from the top of my chest um, down and I can't use my hands, but I've got limited use of my arms. And it was the Christmas of 1996 when my mother-in-law bought me a book called Painters First. It was all about the stories of the mouth and book painting artists, um, the great successes that they had had in their lives through illness, accident or birth defect, but most importantly, the careers that they had made in art. And that got me inspired. A book on mouth artists inspired Keith to continue his artwork. After leaving hospital, he thought it was an end to his creative passion. No, I, it was totally um, by reading that book about the artists within the Mouth Book Painting Association. That enabled me to realise there was hope, you know, there was light at the end of the tunnel and maybe, just maybe, you know, I could do this. And that's what took me on to learn and commit my, I suppose, my whole life to discovering how to do this better. Painting allows him to take a break from his daily frustrations and connect more with his surroundings. I would say that um, one of the most important things for me that painting has given me has been my salvation. Uh, from the very beginning, I guess, it's enabled me to see um, a positive outlook on life. It's uh, given me a focus, it's given me a direction and as I said, I, I paint for the Mouth Foot Painting Association, so my work gets reproduced on Christmas cards and greetings cards around the world. You know, I'm, I'm thrilled to have that experience. It's been my way of life and has been for the last 19 years, I guess. And it's something that uh, is growing uh, in terms of passion and excitement for what I do and the struggles along the way. But it hasn't always been easy. Coming home was his hardest challenge after spending half a year in hospital. When I came home and left Stoke Mandeville Hospital in 1995, I was six months in Stoke Mandeville Hospital, which was a short space of time, relatively speaking. I suppose I just wanted to get out and get on with my life. And that's when I um, sunk into a deep, dark well of depression. I lived in my old house that with rooms upstairs I couldn't access. I lived in literally two rooms downstairs and it was only slowly with the help of a living carer and Cindy, my wife, that I started to rebuild my life. It wasn't until that um, life-changing moment of reading that book at Christmas time that I realized there were possibilities. And it took me out of the difficulties and the the world that was all too apparent to me after um, being so physically disabled to think and take my mind outside of that and to go to happier places and better places and concentrate on the things I could do. Despite his disability, he continues to have a positive outlook on life and uses paintings to recreate memories. Many of his pieces have also featured in local exhibits. Kirsty Chambers, That's TV.